This is part two of the notes for unit six about cell energy. This part is about cellular respiration. Cellular respiration, of course, is the process of releasing energy from food. The energy that cells can use is in the form of ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Um, there are a couple of different ways that organisms can get food. One way they can get food is by making it, like autotrophs do, and the other is by eating it or consuming it in some way, which occurs in heterotrophs. Cellular respiration occurs in two places in the cell. Part of it, the first part of it, occurs in the cytoplasm, <clears throat> and then the rest of it, the main part that produces the most ATP, occurs in the mitochondria. There are three stages of cellular respiration. In the first stage, glycolysis, the glucose or the food is changed from glucose to pyruvate. This part of the process is anaerobic, it does not require oxygen, and it occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell. Glycolysis is a very ancient process. It's been around for billions of years. Um, all organisms on Earth, or almost all organisms on Earth, perform glycolysis <clears throat> in, sa in the same way as all the others do. The second part of the, um, of the cellular respiration process is converting pyruvate to electron carrier molecules. This is an aerobic process. It requires oxygen and it is called the Krebs cycle. It is a cycle of reactions that gradually through a series of steps and a series of reactions breaks down the glucose or the pyruvate molecules to carbon dioxide producing energy carrying molecules and ATP. And then the final part of the cellular respiration process is the electron transport chain. This also occurs in the mitochondrion, on the inner membrane of the mitochondrion, and this is where most of the ATP is produced through the transporting, transporting electrons through an electron transport chain and eventually producing water. So glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm. In this process, the glucose is changed into pyruvate. It's basically pyruvate is a three carbon molecule that's more or less half of, an, of a glucose molecule. It is an anaerobic process. It does not require oxygen. <clears throat> then the, in the mitochondrion, the Krebs cycle occurs in the matrix of the mitochondrion, in the, in the cytoplasm part of the mitochondrion here, and it's going to uh, convert the pyruvate to NADH and FADH2 to energy carrying molecules and produce a little bit of, of ATP along the way. And then the final part, the electron transport chain, occurs on the inner membrane of the mitochondrion. Uh, and in that process, we have a flow of electrons pumping hydrogen ions into the intermembrane space. And then hydrogen is going to flow through ATP synthase to make ATP. This should sound familiar to you if you've already done the part about photosynthesis because the, uh, the electron transport chain is somewhat similar to the one we see in the, in the um, in photosynthesis in the chloroplast. We should also realize that the summary reaction um, of cell respiration starts with glucose, adds oxygen for the aerobic part of the process, and produces carbon dioxide and water and energy in the form of ATP. This should also look familiar to you as it is pretty much the reverse of the photosynthesis equation that you learned in middle school and we just talked about in the previous part of the notes. The first stage is glycolysis. We're going to take the six carbon glucose molecule and we're going to split it in half to make two pyruvate molecules, each having three carbons. It occurs, like we said before, in the cytoplasm. It is anaerobic. And in the process, we're going to make two molecules of NADH and two molecules of ATP. The ATP is ready for the cells to use right away, but the NADPH has to go to the electron transport chain inside the mitochondrion. So here's what you need to know about glycolysis. We're going to get a product of two ATPs and two NADHs and two pyruvates that are three carbon molecules. It occurs in the, in the cytoplasm, it doesn't require oxygen, and the starting material is glucose, which has six carbons. The, where does the power go after that? Well, it goes into the mitochondrion. For this process to occur, the, the rest of the process of cellular respiration to occur, there must be pre oxygen present because the rest of this is an anaerobic process. Once the pyruvate enters the, the uh, mitochondrion, it is immediately converted to acetyl coenzyme A or acetyl CoA, which is a two carbon compound. One carbon dioxide molecule is released from each pyruvate in this process, and then acetyl-CoA is the starting material of the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle occurs again in the matrix of the mitochondrion, which is the cytoplasm part inside the mitochondrion. 
So in here, we so here's our, our, our reaction, changing glucose to pyruvate. That's glycolysis here. Uh, we're producing some NADH. The pyruvate is oxidized into acetyl-CoA, which enters the citric acid cycle, and through a series of reactions produces a little bit more ATP, plus more, much more NADH and FADH2. The NADH is very similar to NADPH, and it's very from photosynthesis, and it's very easy to get them confused. And so the hint I always give is to think about NADPH. The P stands for photosynthesis, and it's present in photosynthesis, and the other one, NADH, is in cellular respiration. FADH2 is another type of uh, electron-carrying molecule. Both NADH and FADH2 travel then to the inner membrane of the mitochondrion to undergo the process of oxidative phosphorylation, um, which occurs by means of electron transport of the e electrons and chemiosmosis, which is the production of ATP by um, ATP synthase. And this whole process uh, of the electron transport chain is called the oxidative phosphorylation because the final electron acceptor, as those electrons are passed through the electron transport chain, is oxygen. The Krebs cycle, the second stage here, we're going to take our two carbon compound, acetyl CoA, and we're going to add it to an existing four carbon compound. <coughs> In the process of uh, all the series of reactions that occur here, the, uh, the uh, four carbon compound, oxaloacetic acid, is going to combine with the acetyl CoA. The coenzyme A will be deposited, and those, those two molecules together make a six carbon citric acid. We're going to add our, NA, our electrons from NADH, and our, our, produce some more NADH. Uh, we're going to produce much more NADH and rearrange the molecules. We're going to release a little bit of carbon dioxide along the way, and then we're going to rearrange that four carbon molecule back into our starting molecule of oxaloacetate. In the process, we're getting two more carbon dioxides from each pyruvate that we started with, and two more ATPs from each, uh, one more ATP from each of the um, pyruvate molecules that enter. There is a little bit of ATP produced here. Um, in the final product of the Krebs cycle, we're going to have two ATPs for immediate cell use, six NADH molecules, and added to the two from the um, Krebs for the glycolysis step, it gives us a total of eight NADHs, plus two FADH2s for every molecule of glucose. Remember that one glucose is two pyruvates, and so that's going to take two turns of the Krebs cycle to produce all of that. Two ATP, six NADH, and two FADH produce per glucose, and that means there's one ATP, three NADH, one FADH2 per acetyl-CoA. Uh, Krebs cycle is aerobic. It occurs in the matrix of the mitochondrion. The starting material is acetyl-CoA that is produced uh, from pyruvate when it enters the mitochondrion. And the NADH and FADH2 will then carry energy to the electron transport chain. So far in this whole process from glucose, we've gotten two ATPs and two NADHs carrying those high energy electrons. When we uh, converted the pyruvate to acetyl CoA, that gave us two more NADHs. And then the Krebs cycle, uh, taking acetyl CoA and breaking it down to carbon dioxide, we're ending up with two more ATPs, six and eight more NADHs, and two FADH2s from that original glucose molecule we started with. The electron transport chain requires oxygen, which serves as the final electron acceptor of this process. It occurs across the inner membrane of the mitochondrion, and similar to what we saw in photosynthesis, it involves the transfer of electrons from one protein to the next. As they're transferred from one protein to the next, they lose a little energy every step along the way, but every protein they pass through is also a proton pump that pumps more uh, hydrogen ions into the intermembrane space. And then those hydrogen ions will diffuse through ATP synthase to make ATP via a process we call chemiosmosis. The electrons are transferred from NADH and FADH2 to the various proteins there in the electron transport chain. Here's an example of what the electron transport chain looks like, similar to what we saw in <clears throat> photosynthesis. We have a series of molecules. We have some mobile carriers that can transfer those electrons from one to the next. The major parts of the major um, clusters of protein in the inner membrane are also proton pumps, so they're going to pump 
hydrogen ions from the from the um, matrix to the intermembrane space. And then once you have a collection of those, um, a, a high concentration of those hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space, they can diffuse back through the ATP synthase molecule and be picked up by oxygen here at the end, making the water, which is a product of cellular respiration, and producing more ATP. This produces a great deal of ATP, about 34 ATP molecules approximately three for each molecule of NADH, so that's 30 ATPs, and about two ATPs for each FADH2 for about four. And so altogether we get around 36 to 38 ATPs total from one glucose molecule through the, that goes through the entire process of cellular respiration. We get two from glycolysis, two from the Krebs cycle, and around 34 from the electron transport chain. The number is not uh, a fixed number. Sources vary as to how many you get. Uh, it's difficult to isolate one exact, um, follow one exact electro, um, glucose molecule through this whole process and determine exactly how many ATPs you meet. But it's somewhere in the range of 30, 32 to 38 or so molecules per ATP. Um, it just depends on what, you know, the actual number that is not important, somewhere in the range of 30 to 38, 32 to 38. This is about 34% of the potential energy of a glucose molecule if you just took the molecule and burned it. Um, and so that's really a pretty good yield considering that we're not, that we're not experiencing the burning and the extreme heat that would be involved in that. In addition, we're also producing water, which is released, um, and CO2, which is also released. Um, in humans, it's released through the respiratory process. That's what you breathe out. If oxygen is not available, then the, then the um, Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain can occur because oxygen is required. Those are aerobic processes. So if we don't have oxygen available, then we only get ATP through glycolysis. But in order for glycolysis to continue, we have to have NAD+, which can pick up the electrons to carry uh, further in the process. In order for those electron carriers to be recycled, then we've got to get, a, get the electrons delivered to another organic compound. And so there are two different processes that can occur in different kinds of cells that can make another organic compound instead from the pyruvate and uh, regenerate or recycle the NADH to NAD+. The two um, Molecules that are made in different kinds of cells are lactate and ethanol. Lactate is lactic acid and ethanol is alcohol. In lactic acid fermentation, this occurs in the muscle cells when there is no oxygen available. This is what causes the muscle cramping and soreness that you get sometimes from over-exercising. In this process, the pyruvic acid is converted into lactic acid uh, by transferring those um, electrons from NADH to the molecule, and then that produces NAD plus that can then be used to continue glycolysis. You don't get any extra ATP from this, but you do get to continue glycolysis, which gives you a little bit of energy, not nearly as much as you get from the entire aerobic process, but still enough to continue uh, activity for a while. The other kind of fermentation occurs in yeast and certain other kinds of uh, cells as well uh, when oxygen is not present. This is called alcohol fermentation or alcoholic fermentation. In this case, the NADH donates electrons to the pyruvic acid to make ethanol uh, and also releases carbon dioxide in the process. This is what yeast uh, do in the fermentation process to make, um, to make, that's how bread rises, the carbon dioxide is uh, causes the bread to the the molecules of the bread to separate from each other and and puff up and the ethanol in the bread making process is actually um, burned off when it's when it's bread baked in the process of making beer and wine then the carbon dioxide can provide some carbonation some fizz so to speak and the ethanol is there contained in the in the liquid that is left over 